I've worked very hard to develop a very succinct and idiosyncratic and um, highly nuanced language. And I'm in my mid-50s, and, and it took a long time to establish that. And now that I have, I'm kind of like, now what? The stereotype of dance is that we exist in this ethereal plane. Our work does disappear as we do it, and that's the best part of it. It's to, that moment is precious because it goes away. You just get a glimpse of a movement and you have to chase it or try to hold it in your memory, but you know, a sculpture you can look at from all sides for as long as you want to stay in the room with it. So I got very jealous of that. I'm absolutely obsessed and in love with the visual world. I knew of Janine's work before I knew Janine. I've worked with people like Cindy Sherman and uh, Anish Kapoor, visual artists who I would share the space with, but they, they had their territory and I had mine. Well, with Janine, I felt that because she was a performer as well, that she would invade me in a way. And I very much wanted to be invaded. I was asked by the choreographer, Stephen Petronio, to do the visuals for a piece he was working on called Like Lazarus Did. He was interested in notions of transcendence and elevation. Spent a lot of time watching him choreograph the piece and spent time with the dancers. One thing that is very evident in his work is that it has this kind of exuberance and complexity. And so when I looked at the work, I said what I would like to do is to offer him stillness. And rather than make a set for the dance, I would perform as well for two hours. During the performance, I lay completely still. She was meditating really on her body as the audience was looking at our body. She was absolutely still in a meditation on her form and her own death against the chaotic look of the stage. Stephen's cousin was having a baby and she kept sending him sonograms and he looked at these images and used them as positions to choreograph one of his dancers, Nick Sessioni, for the last dance of Like Lazarus Did. When he was making that dance, I said, Stephen, we should do it in honey because honey looks and feels like amniotic fluid. And then, of course, it was impossible to do on a stage. We were very interested in making a video where one could not feel gravity. Having had a child, it's miraculous that a body can grow another body, that one body grows from the nutrients of another body. So there is kind of a womb-like viscous body moving through viscous liquid at a very slow and infinitesimal level. Just the smallest movement of the finger and the spread of the toes and the arch of the head took me, you know, a place that I would never go on stage. There was a kind of intimacy that I've, oh, I long for on stage, but I couldn't have on stage. So, um, so Honey Baby led me to that and the, and the, the camera led me to that. Janine didn't invite me to make a dance for her sculpture. She invited me to collaborate with her as a visual artist. Janine and I were both pushing Nick around verbally in that process. So she was getting in my face movement-wise, and I was getting in her face sculpture-wise. People find it very hard to understand that we're, we did this together because they want to think of me as the choreographer and her as the sculptor, but we really tried to erase that line. 
We continue to try to erase that line and we're working together on future projects to do that.